Hey, it's Jack from B&T McFarland. Today we're going over the Kubota SVL 75, so let's get into it. Before we get into the review of the SVL 75 from Kubota, you cannot talk about Kubota construction equipment or any construction equipment for that matter without talking about the inventory that's going on right now and some of the shortages revolving around this equipment. So with Kubota, every single piece of construction equipment that we get on this lot is going to be pre-sold by the time it hits the ground. I know it's going to be very, very tough for you to make your decision six months down the road, seven months down the road, but my best advice to you is to go down to your local dealership and talk about their situation with construction equipment at the moment and try and put your name on one as soon as possible. And that's going to be your best bet of getting one for this summer or even later in the summer. With that out of the way, we're actually going to jump into the front end loader of this tractor and that's where all the excitement is. One of the most important things you're going to be looking at when you purchase your new skid steer is going to be the lift capacity of this. So the industry standard when looking at lift capacities for those of you that are new to the skid steer world is 35% of the tipping load. So for those of you who might be wondering, well, what's a tipping load? So this loader, you can actually put the machine in a position that will outlift the weight of the machine itself. So you can theoretically put an amount of weight in this loader, lift it all the way up to the top to put it in a point where the back end of the machine will start to pick up and that's considered the tipping load. So a industry standard is going to be 35% of that tipping load and in this machine is going to be 30, uh, 2300 pounds sorry, in the front bucket as well the complete tipping load is going to be about 6500 pounds. So with that being said it's going to be the same thing as a tractor that's going to be measured the entire way up to the top of the lift height and if you're lifting things say four or five feet off the ground you're going to be able to get, get a lot more than the recommended weight inside of that bucket. The bucket on these two, it's going to be 72 inches across the front. That's the one that we generally send them with. You can get them in tons of options. You get them with teeth, without teeth, with a bolt on edge, without a bolt on edge. Uh, just definitely talk to your local dealer and see what best fits your needs in terms of matching up the bucket to the proper application. The lift height on these two, it's going to be 119 inches to the very, very top at the hinge pins. So that's going to get you into the back of a triaxle without building a little ramp for the most part. These loaders too, from our dealership, I know this is almost an industry standard right now, it should be. But the majority of these skid steers, they do come with a hydraulic coupler. So you're able to switch between a bucket and a set of forks and a grapple without actually leaving the seat of your machine. You'll just press a little button and those skid steer style quick attaches will come up and the bucket will actually fall off of the machine and you can go into your other implements. Makes it very, very nice as an operator. Definitely gets rid of that some operator fatigue getting in and out of your equipment to switch implements. Definitely a nice feature to have. So now we're going to hop up inside the cab and go over some of the features in there. So that is definitely the nicest feature about the cab on this Kubota skid steer. A lot of other brands, they have the door that swings open and that can actually put you in a position where you forget that the door is open, lift up your arms and you just break that door right off. So with the Kubota, it comes up right over your head, makes it awesome to, to use in the summertime. With this cab too, you also come with heat and air conditioning. We always send these with a radio from factory. So now we're gonna take a look at some of the controls on this too. So as you can see here, you have your nice safety belt lap. So you're gonna actually use this to disengage and engage your controls. There's also a green button over on this side and that's what you're gonna to use to lock and unlock the controls. Beside that, you're gonna have a parking brake. Then beside that, you're gonna have your auxiliary controls. So you can actually choose where your auxiliaries go to on the front of the machine, as well as a high flow button. So that's another option that you should really consider asking your dealer if you ever have a need for a front snowblower, an auger, a trencher, any kind of attachment that does use quite a bit of flow from these machines, definitely get into high flow. It's not a terribly expensive uh, option to, to add when you're looking at the overall price of the machine. It's definitely something that's going to help with resale value and you're not going to be limited to the types of the machines that you're going to be able to use. Beside that, you're going to have the options for your lights. So as you can see up there, you're going to have lights on the cab as well. Over on this side, you're going to have your hydraulic lock, like I mentioned on the bucket. So that's your hydraulic coupler to unlock and unlock your bucket. Beside that, windshield washer fluid, and then you're going to have your DPF inhibitor switch. So we'll get into more of the DPF when we talk about the engine back there. Looking at the controls up here, they are pilot controls. So you're going to have the two joysticks. Your left one's going to be controlling your movement. And then your right one, that's going to be all your loader controls. 
you're gonna see a whole bunch of buttons here and even for me this is pretty intimidating so once you get get used to it you're gonna try and map all your buttons to the different implements that you're gonna be using but if you're just using a bucket the really biggest controls are this is for movement and this is for your bucket and then on the backs of here there's little uh, finger triggers and this it's actually two speeds so in your high speed you're gonna travel about 12 kilometers an hour give or take and then in your lower speed you're gonna be traveling at about seven or eight kilometers an hour and that's just to help with movement speed on the job site. Another nice feature, instead of having to dial in over here all the time for your throttle control, there's actually a foot throttle right here on my right foot. And that's just if you're going into a pile of dirt and you need a little bit of extra power and you don't wanna take your hand off of the loader control, you can press that button and give yourself a little bit more power to get the job done. I think that pretty much covers it with the cab here. So we're gonna hop around back and take a look at the engine. Before we get into the back by the engine, we're actually going to take a look at the hydraulic stack on this machine first. So like I mentioned, there's going to be a standard flow model and that's going to have 17.4 gallons per minute of flow rate. And then the high flow model like this one is, you're going to have 29.3 gallons per minute. So like I said before, there is a bit of a difference between the implements you can put on. Some implements are going to be high flow only and then other implements are going to be only standard flow. Another advantage with moving up into the high flow model is that inside the cabin, like I mentioned there, there is actually a button that you can choose between running the machine in standard flow and then opting to only run it in that high flow version. So if you get the high flow machine, you're not really limited to only running high flow implements either. So if you find a really good standard flow snowblower, you can still run it on the front of this machine. So now that that's covered, we're gonna jump back and take a look at the engine. Now around the back of the skid steer, we're gonna take a look at the engine. So it is a 74 horsepower engine from Kubota. As you guys might know, once you get above that 75 horsepower mark, you will start needing def fluid. We don't actually see that until the S SVL 97 from Kubota. So this one keeps it just under that, that limit. It definitely uses all 74 horsepower of that engine. It's a very, very good engine from Kubota. Getting into the engine, you just pull a little latch here and you're gonna be greeted by the radiator. Uh, the radiator, you can easily swing it out, out of the way uh, just with a couple bolts and then behind that you're going to see your oil filter and your hydraulic filters and your air filters and everything that, that you're going to need to do to do on the job and on the job site services on this machine. We do send these with a block heater as well. This one's just not installed yet, but just like most of the tractors, a lot of these machines, they do get operated in, in the winter for snow removal and clearing off snow off the job sites and even working in the winter on job sites. So the block heater, not necessarily you're gonna need it because it does have glow plugs and those usually work about 90% of the time, but the block heater, it's a nice touch. If you need it, it's always there. So now we're gonna take a look at some of the track system on the Kubota SVL 75. We're gonna talk about the tracks for a second here. I know this is probably not the most important thing you're gonna be thinking about when you're purchasing your new skid steer, but these tracks, they are very, very important for your job. There are a couple types of tracks that you can get from Kubota. So these machines being made in Japan, they do come with a summertime track. With Canadian uh, winters, if you plan on using this machine at all for snow removal or clearing snow whatsoever, we would definitely recommend stepping up into an all season track and that's going to be a little bit more aggressive. It's the same thing as switching out your car in the winter time from summer tires into winter tires. It's just going to give you that little bit extra traction so you're not spinning around and sliding all over the place. Tensioning these tracks too, Kubota has done a fantastic job. It is very, very easy. There's just going to be a grease gun slot right in there. You just pump it with a little bit of grease and then you can put a little bit of tension in the track. I just want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe, like, and comment. And if you guys need help with parts, sales, or service, remember to give us a call at 613-225-0555. Thank you and have a nice day.